The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he would send the crowds away. After sending the crowds away, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, while the boat, by now far out on the lake, was battling with a heavy sea, for there was a headwind. In the fourth watch of the night, he went towards them, walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But at once, Jesus called out to them, saying, Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. It was Peter who answered, Lord, he said, if it is you, tell me to come to you across the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards Jesus across the water. But as soon as he felt the force of the wind, he took fright and began to sink. Lord, save me, he cried. Jesus put out his hand at once and held him. Man of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And as they got into the boat, the wind dropped. The men in the boat bowed down before him and said, truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have a wonderful text here today. Have you practiced your walking on water skills recently? Well, what you could do is fill up a bathtub and start there. Then go to the swimming pool right after. But start in the deep end because you don't want to, you know, have a little bit of faith, huh? do you? We have a, a text here today where this is in the, the part in, Ma, in Matthew's gospel where Matthew is showing forth the divinity of Christ. And, and putting it in, in terms that you can't miss unless you're blind. That is if you're a first century Jew. But for us who live in this 21st century, it's very hard for us sometimes to see the text, to hear it, and to understand. So as we listen to the text, Jesus sends the disciples out ahead. He sends the crowd away, but he goes to? He goes to? Aha. Uh -huh. And what that tells you? That whenever you look for Jesus, he's in commune with his father. So the things that Jesus is doing, they're coming out of prayer and out of that union between himself and his father. And that union is always expressed in his time out alone to pray. And they say, on a mountain. And anytime you, you hear a mountain in the scripture, you, you know we're talking about an encounter with God. That's what, that's what the, the language is, of the scripture is. Out up at, at Mount Sinai, we see Elijah goes up the mountain. And what happens up on that mountain? Well, God passes by him. That's another way of saying God visits him. Not in the earthquake, not in the storm, not in the mighty roar, but in the gentle breeze. So up the mountain is that place where, where God is visiting his people. And, and Jesus goes up the mountain. He goes to pray, and clearly God is visiting him. And while the disciples are rowing hard and getting nowhere, Jesus kind of just kind of saunters with a saga boy walk across the ocean, unperturbed by every. You, you, you can see the walk? Yeah? You can see the walk? I want you to see the walk, you know. Unperturbed by everything, man. And of course, the guys are terrified. And this is the first clue 
that Matthew is giving us. Because whenever God appears, people are terrified. You should be. I am mortified, petrified. Because whenever God appears, the ego must die. Because whenever God appears, you know where the center of the universe really is, and it is not you. You know where it is, and it is not in all the things that you have made important into your life. You know where the center of the universe is, and it is other, so other that, that there is nothing in our mind that could comprehend the truth of what this truth is. So they're terrified, and Jesus says to them in standard biblical language, every time God appears, do not be afraid. See it with me now. I, I'm often amused by the do not be afraid, you know. I mean, Mary is a young girl. The angel comes to visit her, and the first thing the angel says, do not be afraid. Well, I'm scared. She has to be scared. Moses in the burning bush, do not be afraid. Every theophany, like, like Elijah, do not be afraid. But it is terrifying when God appears. And, and the whole biblical text of the gospel is preparing us to understand that the disciples saw what happened as an encounter with God. In biblical language, it's a theophany, an appearance of the divine. Like, like when Jesus, with Peter, James, and John up on the mountain, and, and Elijah and Moses came, Peter was terrified. Because every appearance of the divine puts us into terror because it helps us to understand that this, on, this thing here on earth that we take so seriously and we invest so much time in is so fleeting and so passing as, as to not really even count at all in the, in the grand scheme of salvation history. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. You know, the Bible has do not be afraid 365 times, huh? That is one page day in the year. Do not be afraid. Because God keeps coming to his people every single day in the year. That's why we must remember every day in the year, do not be afraid. And then what does Jesus do? He says, courage, it is I. Courage, it is I. Well, the English translation is a very bad translation. Ego Amy. That's what God said to Moses in the burning bush. I am. Do not be afraid. I am. Jesus invokes the divine name to communicate with his disciples to tell them why not to be afraid. Do not be afraid because I am who I am. And every first century you would have heard that as, as Jesus claiming to be the one to whom Moses experienced in the burning bush. Every first century Jew would have known by that great I am statement that, that Jesus is claiming to be God. And not only is he claiming to be God, he's giving you the proof by walking on the water. He's just fed the 5,000. He's just fed the 5,000. Now he's walking on water. And on top of that, he's claiming to be God. And you have to remember that the reason at this trial why they decided to, to crucify him was for blasphemy. Blasphemy is a crime of claiming to be God. And that's why they put him to death. And we can say for the truth. So he's walking on the water. He's claiming to be God. And the boy is terrified. They're just terrified. And now, Matthew alone has this piece of the text, huh? and it's the most beautiful piece of scripture. Most beautiful. Peter. You know, Peter's my boy. Huh? I love the guy. I, 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 just, I just love how he's do things. My boy, man, he say, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come. Now, what kind of foolish reasoning is that? You're not sure if it is him, but you're saying if it is him, so if it is not him and the person tell you to come, what are you going to do next? If it is you, tell me to come. And Jesus says, come. 
And Peter does the unthinkable. He gets out of the boat and starts to walk to Jesus over the water. And I, I, want you to, I want you to imagine this scene for a moment in your eye. I want you to, to picture it. He's getting out of the boat and starting to walk on this water that is turbulent. This water that is uncertain. This water that is, that is just churning. He's walking on this water across to Jesus. I want you to think about it. Imagine it in your mind. And then he feels the force of the wave. Yeah. And he sinks. He sinks, you know. And now he's gone. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And Jesus says, why did you doubt? And he brings him close to himself. And gets back into the boat with him. This is a most beautiful text. The doubt of Peter leads to his intimacy with Christ. Everybody focuses on the fact that Peter failed, huh? Yeah? That, 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 that he start off a good thing and look, look, he gone and fail. He gone and sink. But you know, the 11 fellows who were sitting in the boat, they can't even talk about this experience because why? Because they remain in the boat. Peter alone had the courage and the faith to, to leave the safety of the boat and start to do what Jesus told him to do, walk on the water. It is only Peter who could say, well, yes, it might have been half a minute or a minute or three seconds or however long it was, but I walked on that water. The rest of the, the characters sitting down like, like boat potatoes, happy in their in the little comfort zone, sitting down talking about the day when they went onto the water and, and what happened. And Peter alone can talk about what it was like to feel water below your feet feeling like concrete. And what it was like to make strides over that water and, and, and to experience that, that thrill of, of, of walking in, in, in what was completely unreal and unknown. It is only Peter who can talk about faith in that kind of way. Only Peter. I, I would give all for the, for the couple seconds or minutes or however long Peter walked on the water. Because the other story is a, is a, is a story of, 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 of husbands. And, and now, we are, now we are reading the text now at a second level. Because the boat is always a church. The boat is always a church. And, and in the safety of the church, it's easy to, to, to feel ourselves in, the, in this battered condition in which we are in. And, and you know that the church is being battered on every form by, by gale winds that are coming at us in every single way, from every direction, from the corruption, from the, from the sex scandals, from, from the, the, the bishops, from the priests, from the religious, from, from every single side. You know the scandals that we have faced, like headwinds up, upon us, and that no matter what we try to do, we are making no headway in the midst of this storm that we are facing inside of this church. So this, this story is no longer a, just a story about Jesus and his 11. It's about us living here today. And this church in which we are in, where we are battening a headwind that it seems as if no matter how hard we go, there's no, there's no making headway in this, in this time in which we are living. And, and, and as difficult as it is to be church today, we, we look at the story and we see the joy because we know that somewhere coming on the water will be Jesus. And we could look back at our 2,000 year history and we can see that no matter how dark the darkest moment of history has been, that Jesus has met his church right in the midst of that dark difficulty and, and helped the church to move from that dark difficulty back to mission and evangelization one more time. That no matter who proclaims the death of the church as it did when Pope Benedict resigned and the whole world media decide, well, this is the end of the Catholic Church, they didn't see the resurrection coming when Pope Francis stepped onto that stage and the whole media changed their script in five seconds flat. 
They didn't see it coming. And I want to say to you today, do not despair at the headwinds that we are facing as a church. Do not despair at the difficulty that your friends give you for being Catholic. Do not despair when your family deride you and give you all kind of foolish things because you start talking about Jesus Christ. Do not despair. Because you see, and I want to take the text to the next level, the boat, not just as church universal, what about the boat as church domestic? You know the headwinds in that, in, in that boat. Eh? You know the way the gale force is, is, is come a thousand miles a minute in three seconds if you only say, well, only come into church this weekend? Eh? You know that, that gale wind is blow? You, you know the gale wind that blows when you start to talk about values and morality and ethics in, in the domestic church, when you see things happening that you know your grandmother would, 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 would be turning five times in the grave if she knew these things or the things that were going to take place today. You know the gale winds in the domestic church that you are facing. And I want to say, do not be despairing. Because they're coming along the water is Jesus Christ. Right there to meet you in your domestic church. Right there to meet you. And, and don't despair at the, the ferocity of the waters. Because there in that great storm that will emerge every time you, you speak for Christ. And every time you speak what is true. And every time you challenge a condition or an, an expectation of the world in your, in your home. Every time you do it, you know the gale force of wind that comes at you. Yes or no? You know it. Man, that mighty roar of waters could come from nowhere. But do not be despairing. Because Jesus is coming. Walking to you on them same waters. But you have to have the eyes of faith to see that it is him. And when you see him, call him. And, and, and when you hear him answer you, say to him, if it's you, tell me, come. And you get out of that safety. You get out of the comfort that you have had. You get out of the settled accommodation to mediocrity and to lack of faith and secularity that you have had. Get out of that accommodation and walk to him over that water. And whoever it is that is blowing the gale force of winds against you, if, if you can see in their face Jesus Christ, you walk to them. But you must see Jesus in their face because otherwise you will get like them. And I answer anger for anger and gale force win for gale force win. You have to see the face of Christ in that one. And when you see the face of Christ, you walk towards them. But do not stop looking at the face of Christ because the moment you stop seeing the face of Christ in them, you know you're sinking. You know. In our nation, the gale force winds is blowing at ferocious, ferocious speed. And the gale force winds of coronavirus has been, has been terrible. It has brought a fear into this nation, into the people, into, into the inhabitants. that There's something unreal. But I want, to hear, I want you to hear in the midst of this second wave of corona, Jesus saying, do not be afraid. I am. You see, brothers and sisters, we are coming to a stage in the church where we, if we're going to be church at all, we have to dare to look straight into the eyes of Jesus and do what has been unthinkable. Do what defies logic and rationality and common sense. If we're going to be church at all, we're going to have to defy... <clears throat> the things that are convention and the things that common sense will dictate against. Because those 11 who sat in that boat, all they had was practicality and practical reason and common sense. That's why they stayed glued to their boat. But you have to get up off your... boat. Boat, that's the word, boat. And dare to walk on the water. Christianity is a religion of faith, brothers and sisters, not practicality and not common reason. It's a religion of faith. And, and, and that be, means that we have to do the things that, that, we, that is unthinkable. We're setting up a, a whole project right now in sea lots, and that's walking on water. 
We're going into the very heart of, of, of one of the most troubled communities in this, in this country to set up a school and a whole way of, of offering development to a community that is in deep distress. That's walking on water. And in your church, your domestic church, your family, Jesus is going to show you clearly the ways he wants you to walk on water. And when he shows you, don't do like the 11 and talk about how hard that breeze was blowing. Do like Peter. Get up off the chair. Get up out the boat. And go towards Jesus wherever he is. Wherever he is, you go towards him. But keep your eyes on Jesus. Because it is through him that you will find salvation. And even if you sing, know it is Jesus who will reach down to your hand and draw you to himself. And at the end of the day, the men in the boat, they bowed and they worshipped him and said, truly you are the son of God. Because they understand the point. And the point is that today on this altar, Jesus himself, the same Jesus that walked on the water will come in the Eucharist. The same Jesus who, who calmed the seas and told them, it is I. That same Jesus comes to you and to me this day in the midst of the storms that we face. He will be here. And if you have the eyes to see, the heart wide open, you too will recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Amen.